guys, it's Kelly and Bentley's here with me today. He loves when I read you guys stories. Um, so I wanted him to be here to listen. So today I'm gonna read Clementine, The Talented Clementine by Sarah Pennypacker. Um, hope you guys are doing well. Um, Bentley loves to listen to the stories. I hope you guys enjoy this one. I'm gonna read you chapter one of The Talented Clementine. All right, here we go. All you have to do is sit back and relax and listen to the story. All right, nice to see you. All right, here we go. Chapter one. There's Clementine sitting at her desk at school. What do you think? How do you think she looks? All right. Think about how you think she looks and then we'll find out, okay? Chapter one. I have noticed that teachers get exciting, confused with boring a lot. But when my teacher said, class, we have an exciting project to talk about, I listened anyway. Our school is going to raise money for the big spring trip, he said. The first and second graders are gonna hold a bake sale. The fifth and sixth grades are going to have a car wash. And the third and, third and fourth grades are going to put on a talent show. <laughs> All the kids in the room made sounds if they had thought a talent show was exciting news, except me, because it was N-O-T, not exciting. But okay, fine, it wasn't boring either. Just then, Margaret's teacher came to the door to talk to my teacher, which was good because it gave me an extra minute to think. Old people love to pat my little brother's head, I said when my teacher walked back into the room. How about we set up a booth and charge them a quarter to do it instead of having a talent show? But he ignored me, which is called getting on with the day when a teacher does it and being inconsiderate when a kid does it. Class, he said, one of the fourth graders has come up with the name for our show. Talent Palooza, Night of the Stars. It had to be that Margaret. She had to have come up with the name. First, we'll need a cooperative group to make some posters, my teacher said. And that's when the worried feeling, as if somebody was scribbling with a big black crayon, started up in my brains. My teacher kept on going with the cooperative group list. The scribbling got harder and faster and spread down into my stomach. I knew what this meant. I raised my hand. Yes, Clementine? Would you like to be in the cooperative group for refreshments? No, thank you, I said extra politely, but what I'd like to go is to go to Mrs. Rice's office. Clementine, you don't need to go see the principal, my teacher said, you're not in any trouble. Well, it's just a matter of time, I told him. My teacher looked at me as if suddenly he had no idea how I'd gotten into his classroom, but then he gave a big sigh. <sighs> All right. So I gave, so I got up. As I left, the O'Malley twins gave me the thumbs up sign, which made me feel like I wasn't alone, but they were wearing their thank goodness it's not me faces, which made me know that I was. I walked down the hall on worried legs and knocked on the door with worried knuckles. Come in, Principal Rice said. When she saw it was me, she, shelt, she held out her hand for the note from my teacher that would tell her what kind of little chat we should have today. We have done this a lot. But today, I just sat on the chair and started right in. What's your smarter, chimpanzees or orangutans? Hmm, that's an interesting question, Clementine, Mrs. Rice said. Maybe you could ask the science teacher after you've told me what you're doing here. Also, I've been wondering what the difference is between smashed and crashed. Mrs. Rice handed me her dictionary. And then suddenly, I didn't want to know anymore that's the miracle about dictionaries. Well, how about you put the dictionary on the floor so you can rest your feet on it instead of kicking my desk? Principal Rice suggested. You seem to have very busy feet today. So I did, and it felt good. Thank you, I said. I don't have any talents. Excuse me, said Principal Rice. I don't have any talents, I said again. Mrs. Rice looked at me for a long time, and then she said, oh, and there you go, Principal Rice, looking across the desk at Clementine. Oh. 
Then I told her I was all done being there in her office and I left. When I got off the bus, Margaret's brother Mitchell was sitting on the front steps of our apartment building. What's the matter, Clementine? He asked me right away. I guess my worried face was still on. I handed him the stupid flyer my teacher had sent home with us. Talent Palooza, Night of the Stars, Share Your Talent, Saturday Night, he read. Then he handed the stupid flyer back to me. So what's the problem? I leaned over, but not too close in case he thought I was trying to be his girlfriend, which I am not, and I whispered the problem to him. I can't hear you, he said. Here's Mitchell and Clementine on the stairs. I can't hear you, he said. So I whispered it again. I still can't hear you, he said. So I yelled it. That's impossible, he said. Everybody has a talent. Not me. No singing? No singing. No dancing? No dancing. No musical instruments? No musical instruments. How about hopping, he said finally. No hopping, I answered. Everyone can hop, Mitchell said. Not me, then I proved it to him. Wow, said Mitchell, twice. I sat down on the step beside him, except they fell off because my body was a little confused from trying to hop. See, I said, I can't even do sitting, it's hopeless. Maybe not, Clementine, cheer up. Maybe you have a really great talent you just haven't figured out yet. I gave Mitchell a see, I'm cheered up already smile. But that was just my mouth pretending.